Calories in versus calories out is only one half of the equation and it really eclipses the more important issue, which is how much of an increase in metabolism does a given exercise create after the exercise. It is during that period of time that you oxidize more fat, sometimes for up to 24 hours. When you look at the percentage of body fat burned, this is going to be optimal for fat burning overall because of the ways that it increases basal metabolic rate. Let's talk about movement and the more traditional kinds of movement, aka exercise, that has been shown to lead to increases in metabolism and fat loss to greater degrees depending on whether or not, for instance, you're fasted when you do it or not, whether or not you do your cardio first or your resistance training first. We're finally starting to arrive at a consensus of when is best to do exercise and what types of exercise to do if your goal is fat loss. Different types of exercise engage the musculature of the body and the heart and the lungs in different ways and can have vastly different effects on things like hormones and metabolism depending on whether or not it's of high intensity, moderate intensity, or low intensity. So rather than think about weight training versus cardiovascular exercise, I think the most simple way, the most fluid way to have this conversation about exercise and fat loss is in terms of three general types of training, whether or not it's done with weights or body weight doesn't really matter. And those are high intensity interval training, something that seems to have gained a lot of popularity in recent years, so-called HIIT, H-I-I-T. So high intensity interval training, sprint interval training. So that's gonna be very high intensity or SIT or moderate intensity continuous training, M-I-C-T. So we can think about high, medium, and low intensity exercise, although low intensity um, usually means that you could carry on a conversation or maybe you'd have to gasp every, every few steps or so while trying to talk and run. That's, I think, uh, going to be the most useful way to have this conversation that we're having now because there's so many different forms of exercise that people do and intensity is important. Let's ask the question that I think many of people are wondering about, which is, is it better, meaning do you burn more fat if you do your exercise fasted? And people have tried to really split hairs on this every which way. People say, well, you can fat fast because fat and protein doesn't lead to as great increases in insulin as other things. Maybe you can have a few almonds and then still train. And indeed, insulin will prevent fat oxidation. I want to be really clear, the burning part of fat in the cell, the, the movement of the fatty acid, insulin inhibits that process. And so here's the rule or the protocol that I extracted from that literature. At a period of about 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, there's a switchover point whereby if you ate before the exercise, you will burn far less fat from the 90 minute point onward than you would if you had gone into the training fasted. So let me repeat that. If it's moderate intensity, so-called zone two cardio type exercise, at the 90 minute point, if you happen to have eaten before the exercise within one to three hours prior to the exercise, you reduce the amount of fat that you will burn from 90 minutes onward. Whereas if you had fasted prior to the exercise, you hadn't eaten anything for three hours or more prior to the exercise, at the 90 minute point, you will start to burn more fat than you would had you eaten. Now, 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise is a lot. So that's a, that's a pretty long run. Even if you're running at a pretty slow pace, like a 10 or 12 minute mile, that's a lot of running. That's a lot of swimming. So that's a lot of walking. That's a lot of hiking. Now, there are also studies that point to the fact that if one does high intensity training or even the very high intensity forms of training like sprints or squats or deadlifts or any kind of activity that can't be maintained for more than these, you know, eight or I would say up to 60 seconds. So a set of lifting weights repeated, repeated. If that's done for anywhere from 20 minutes up to 60 minutes, well, then the switchover point in which you can burn more fat if you go into that fasted comes earlier. And this makes sense because there's nothing holy about the 90 minute point for medium intensity zone two cardio. That 90 minute point is the point in which the body shifts over from mainly burning glycogen, basically sugar that comes from muscles or the liver and realizes this is going on for a while. I'm going to shift over to a fuel that 
is in reserve, like body fat. It's This is going to happen for a while, so I'm going to start tapping into body fat stores. Now, fat doesn't have a little brain there. It is innervated by neurons, but it doesn't have thoughts. And you don't actually control this switch with your mind. This is something that has to do with the milieu of various hormones. What has to happen is insulin has to go down far enough. So if you ate before the exercise, you'd have an increase in insulin. If you ate carbohydrates, you'd have a bigger increase in insulin. Fat and proteins indeed will have lower amounts of insulin and fasting will give you the lowest amount of insulin. Well, then that switchover point is going to come earlier in the exercise. And if you think about it, if you were to do something high intensity for 20, 30, 40 minutes, so maybe lift weights and then get into zone two cardio, if you were fasted, the literature says that you're going to burn more body fat per unit time than if you had eaten before or during the exercise. So what does this mean? This means if you want to burn more body fat, exercise intensely for 20 to 60 minutes and then move over into zone two cardio. And if you do that fasted or the medium intensity cardio, I should say, and if you do that fasted, then indeed you will burn a higher percentage of body fat. So again, this isn't really an issue of how long you exercise. It's an issue of how intensely you exercise and therefore what fuel source you're drawing from. So hopefully I've made that clear, but basically you need to deplete glycogen or through high intensity exercise and then move to a steady state exercise that will allow you to burn more fat or you need to perform a medium intensity or low intensity type exercise for a long period of time before you shift over to burning fat. And indeed, it seems that going into all that fasted will facilitate the burning of more fat overall. But if you can't even get to the exercise, if you're somebody who just can't do the training at all, you're unwilling to or you're incapable of training unless you eat something, then obviously eating something makes the most sense. But in general, the theme there is very simple, which is that you want insulin levels to be pretty low if your goal is body fat reduction, if you want to oxidize body fat. So fasting in some cases, fat fasting in other cases where you're just ingesting fats, fat and protein in some cases, or for some people it will be eating carbohydrates. I'm not here to dictate a particular nutrition regimen. That's just how the hormone balance of these things and fat oxidation works. Now, one thing that's very interesting and cannot be overlooked is this issue of how much energy you burn during and after the activity. And some of you probably already know about this, but the whole business of calories in versus calories out and people counting their the number of calories they burn during their aerobic session or during their whatever session is only one half of the equation and it really eclipses the more important issue, which is how much of an increase in metabolism does a given exercise create after the exercise? And we could talk for hours about this, but the simple way to view this is that high intensity training anaerobic training of weight training, sprints, burpees, push-ups, sit-ups, whatever it happens to be, that anaerobic exercise that's of higher intensity taps into glycogen stores during the movement and will burn more energy per unit time than moderate intensity. High intensity burns more than moderate intensity. That's straightforward. What's interesting is that all the studies that I was able to find on what happens after that type of exercise show that the percentage of fat that you burn after high intensity exercise is actually greater. In other words, you burn a lot of glycogen during the high intensity exercise. And then after the exercise, the post-exercise oxygen consumption, as it's sometimes called, goes up. We know this after you train intensely, that post-exercise oxygen consumption goes up sometimes for up to 24 hours. And it is during that period of time that you oxidize more fat, not glycogen. Now, what's interesting is that the reverse is also true. For people that do long bouts of low or moderate intensity exercise, so typically this would be things like running, swimming, biking, et cetera. So 60, 90 minutes, two hours, maybe even people that are training for marathons or half marathons, when they stop training, they burn more glycogen, more carbohydrate, even though they were burning more body fat per unit time during the low intensity exercise. So there's this kind of inversion, high intensity burns more glycogen during the activity, more body fat afterwards, moderate to low intensity burns more percentage wise, more body fat is oxidized than glycogen during the move, during the actual exercise afterward, it's more glycogen. Point is you should pick exercise that you like, that you're going to do regularly, but it does seem that the high intensity exercise followed by moderate intensity exercise is going to be optimal for fat burning overall because when you look at the percentage of body fat burned 
and you look at the overall increase in basal metabolic rate, moderate and high intensity training followed by low intensity training or even just followed by going back into life is going to be the best way to continue to burn body fat because of the ways that it increases basal metabolic rate.